Alright, this thing's fully floating. That is, that's not that bad. For, for how big this frame is, that's not bad. So, comment below how heavy you think this frame is, and I'll say the answer at the end of the video. Alright, let's find out how easy it is to remove this engine from the frame. We may need to remove the oil cooler, but I don't know, may maybe not, we'll, we'll see. It's a bit of a tight squeeze getting this thing out of here. <laughs> ah, it's a bit scary. This thing is a little loud. A little obnoxious. God, this thing's a little heavy. It is now time to weld this frame together. I'm really hoping this isn't going to take forever because uh, this, is a, this is a lot of tubing that I have to weld. We also have the trailing arms and the A-arms we, we need to weld, so hopefully this isn't going to take more than a couple days. Yeah, looking at this frame, there's a, there's a lot of stuff to weld, so let me, uh, let, let me get to it, I guess. I believe the frame is now finally pretty much welded together. Only took me two days of welding to finally finish it. 
So, we pretty much just have the trailing arms as well as the A arms to finish, and then we're, uh, we're pretty much done. Alright, A arms are done, trailing arms are done, the frame is now finally done, so all the welding is now finally finished. Alright, now while the frame is upside down, there's a couple things we need to do. Uh, first is we need to install the sway bar on this thing. Now, it's pretty much, I'm pretty much just thinking of just putting it here. I did install the uh, one of the swing arms on here just to make sure that it's not the, this isn't going to be in the way of anything and we can hook it up to the sway bar, or hook it up to the trailing arm. Like I said, the downside to this is, you know, looking at how flat the bottom of the frame is on this, and then this is going to be sticking out, so if I do bottom the middle of the frame out on the ground, it's, the, it's rocks and dirt's going to, you know, the ground's going to hit this. That's hopefully not going to be an issue. I don't know. It, it, the downside to using this, because I found it at the scrapyard, I have no idea what this is off of, so if it does break, It'd be really tricky to figure out what this is off of so I can get a new one. Uh, I just kind of thought of that. So, but I think it'll be fine. So let's just uh, let's just put it here, something like something like that. Alright, so at least we got the mounts for the sway bar installed. I was going to start working on connecting the sway bar to the trailing arms and figuring out, you know, how that's going to work, but I'm not, I want this as close to the trailing arms as possible. You know, I don't want this sticking up like this, but uh, I need to make sure that this isn't going to hit the sprocket and chain and everything. So I kind of need to install that stuff and then figure out what angle this should be when it's connected to this and make sure it still works with its full, you know, movement of the suspension and everything. So I think let's, uh, this is good for now. We at least got the sway bar installed and we'll finish this uh, once this thing is fully reassembled and we can verify that it's not going to be in the way of anything. But uh, yeah, this thing, it just, it, I, I keep imagining just a rock coming and smashing into this and bending and breaking stuff, but uh, I know it's a bit vulnerable right here, but there's really no other place I could, I could put this, so hopefully it'll be fine. 
I don't know. We'll find out. Now, the other thing we need to do uh, while the frame's upside down is install the floor pans uh, for the driver and passenger side. I have two of these that are perfect size. I found these at the scrapyard, and I think I paid like 14 or 15 bucks for two of these, so that's that's awesome. Now, all we gotta do is just cut them to size and uh, drill some holes, weld some tabs in place, therefore we can bolt these to the frame. Floor pans are now done. So, I'm really curious, how heavy is this frame? How much does this thing weigh? I really don't think it's gonna weigh as much as you guys think. But uh, I'm really curious, like, what is the exact weight of this thing? Now, I bought one of these uh, one of these crane scales on Amazon. Apparently, this thing can weigh up to like 2,000 pounds, so should be enough to be able to weigh this thing. Now, I think I'm gonna move my my chain hoist to the edge of the roof. I don't want to pick it up in the middle of the roof. I'm not sure how much my roof can hold up, so I'm gonna move it to the edge, and I think it's gonna be a lot stronger that way. There it is. All right, make sure there's no weight on it. Zero it out. Okay, okay, that's not bad. That is not bad for how big this frame is. Just to make sure you guys don't think I'm cheating, yes, it is fully floating. Nothing else is supporting it. And this thing weighs <laughs> 331 pounds. That is not bad. For how big this frame is, that's not, it's in pounds, right? Yeah, 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 it's in pounds. You gotta admit, that is not bad for how big this thing is. I'm actually a little surprised. I was expecting it to weigh like 400, maybe 450 pounds, so. Yeah, 331 pounds, that's, that's not bad. I mean, that makes sense. Uh, the majority of this tubing is inch and a quarter with a wall thickness of 0 0.075. So, which, which is, that's kind of thin. Uh, the, the wall thickness that you ideally should use for an off-road vehicle like this uh, is anywhere from 0 0.095 to 0 0.11. That's ideally the wall thickness you should use. But I use 0 0.075 because I'm using motorcycle engines. They're not as powerful as bigger engines. So I just have to make the frames a lot, uh, really, as lightweight as possible. So that's why you guys see me add a ton of tubing. I have to add a ton of cross bracing to this to strengthen it up to make sure it's going to survive uh, jumping and off-roading and all that kind of stuff. So you guys see me add just a ton of tubing. You're like, yeah, stop adding tubing. It's making it even heavier. But it's, yeah, it's, it's thin tubing. It's what I got to do to uh, to make it strong enough. So. Now I'm curious, now I want to weigh everything else. Now I want to weigh the engine, the trailing arms, the A-arms, the, the, the transmission. I want to weigh all the heavy stuff and kind of get a ballpark of uh, what this thing's in. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to, uh, to see what you guys said in the comments of how heavy you guys think. Uh, 
this thing is, I know some of you guys are probably thinking it's probably uh, way heavier, way heavier than, uh, than what it was. So Anyway, next video, uh, we're going to start reassembling this. As we're reassembling it, we have to do a bunch of stuff. Uh, we have to finish the CV axles. we got to lengthen those, weld those together. We need to finish the, the spool mounts. We need to finish the tire, these uh, rack and pinion mounts. We need to finish. A so we're not really going to just slap this thing back together. We're going to slowly reassemble it and uh, finish stuff along the way. Therefore, it's a lot easier to access. Uh, just the stuff that's in the middle, like the the chain that's going from the jack shaft to the front spool. We have to add the chain guides. We have to get the, the shifting mechanism to shift it from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive. Uh, built and figured out and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to be doing that in the next uh, in the next couple of videos. But uh, anyway, guess that's it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video.